All right, so sorry about the technological delays on getting started. My name is Melissa Evers Hood, and this is Paul Cooper, and uh, we're from Intel. I work in Portland, and he works in London, so we're um, really used to the rain. You're, you're in good company here with all of our moisture. Um, I, we want to talk about today a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing with regard to uh, IoT and JavaScript and Node and what we think is a really interesting confluence that's happening over the next couple years. And what we're hoping to do is when it's at a discussion in the panel, in the description, we intend this to be a discussion. So I am going to tee up some of the trends that we see and then we truly are hoping for audience participation. Well, actually, we're not hoping. This is gonna be a really short talk if we don't get audience participation. So um, I want you to put your thinking caps on and we're going to have a fun little conversation and then um, we're going to make this really interactive. So start critically thinking. And, and I'm going to just hope that my presentation cooperates now and we're going to be good to go from here. So um, what we really see with regard to IoT development is um, just a tremendous amount of freedom and innovation happening. You know, when we talk about the worldwide developer population, we talk in terms of 10 million or so developers, depending upon who you count. That includes large corporations with IT shops doing development for internal purposes. That includes you know, large in ISVs, um, software vendors. That includes independents. It includes hobbyists, right? 10 million people. And these folks are, have been doing development on a variety of platforms. They're usually multilingual. And we see them um, really getting frustrated with what we see as the, the glut in the mobile application space. You know, 1.4 million applications on Google Play for Android today, right? That's a, that's a lot of applications. It makes it really challenging to be differentiated. And so when we talk about 3 million developers on Node, you know, we really think that that momentum is coming a lot from the challenges that we see with the developer population in the mobile space. Um, so with that, we are one of the data points that I think is really interesting is a look at IoT languages. Now, if you ask someone who's not familiar with the Node community about IoT development, they're probably going to talk about C and C++ development. They're going to talk about native implementations. The reality is what we see today is far different. We see a lot of development languages coming into IoT, and a lot of them are mobile languages, right? But what is the most popular? HTML5 and JavaScript. These are the most popular primary and secondary languages that IoT developers are bringing to I IoT, bringing to the embedded space. And this is really interesting because it points to kind of the, the multilingual nature of the ecosystem and where folks are coming from, right? This pretty much paints the picture for you of the developers, of the developer population who's targeting IoT. Now, what I think is really interesting about this also is if you're thinking that hybrid app development in the mobile landscape is a niche, it's really not. Um, we've done internal code analysis of um, the top tens of thousands of Android applications. Most of them, a majority of Android applications today are actually hybrid applications. They're using JavaScript. They are using JavaScript APIs. Um, and so this, is, this isn't some niche model in mobile. This is a mainstream model of development. And all those folks know JavaScript. All those folks are coming over into IoT and bringing all those skills and tools with them. So then you compound that and you're saying, okay, so what are these guys developing, right? Guys and gals. This is a picture just demonstrating the types of things that these folks are targeting. So they're bringing, you know, and you'll see on this slide, you'll see endpoints, you'll see headed units, you'll see management in the cloud, you'll see a wide variety. And I think one of the things that Node brings in terms of strengths is the ability to touch and develop, be a development target for a large variety of things that developers are interested in. So it, why is this all happening at the same time? I think, it, so you see this momentum from mobile, all these developers coming in. You know, you look at the statistics from Gartner, who will tell you 21 billion connected units by 2020. 21 billion connected units. We're supposed to be at 6 billion units by the end of 2016. That's crazy. And so this is, it's an exploding landscape. You couple that with it being totally greenfield. You couple that with it being an area where you have a whole bunch of development talent who's frustrated with the mobile landscape, 
looking for new ways to innovate, and you really see a really interesting opportunity. So this is a chart also from mobile, uh, Vision Mobile is the source for most of this data, um, that talks about what these IoT developers are targeting, right? There's a lot of innovation. 56% of the folks that are out there are coming into the IoT landscape, and they're looking, they're, they're tinkering, they're hobbyists. Um, we've sit, sat through some of the talks of, in this session, and you've seen some of the tinkering and the, to, uh, the hobbying, right? And Node is perfectly positioned with you know, the momentum behind NPM and all of the different things that are happening. You've got just a wonderful confluence of utilities and tools and capabilities in this green field exploding landscape that is really, really interesting. But that doesn't even get to the half of it. This is our future. And this is what really makes us super excited. So remember that number I gave you, 10 million developers worldwide? 10 million? Sounds like a big number. How about 146 million? 146 million is the number of kids that were educated with Hour of Code last year. This is the Computer Science Education Week right now. Um, so you'll see stuff all over Twitter with Hour of Code and Scratch and all this other kind of stuff that's happening. Every child in the New York City school system by 2020 is going to be educated in computer science. Every child in the United, in the United Kingdom is getting a microcontroller and learning TypeScript. Every kid. So when you think about, when I think about, okay, you've got you know, this IoT exploding landscape, you've got all of this momentum behind JavaScript development, the tools that are available to folks via Node and the utilities that are possible, and then you talk about millions upon millions of kids who are four to 10 years away from being our customers, our friends, our competitors, our, you know, this is the future, right? And you get this really interesting opportunity. We're looking at 2020 and saying, what does the future hold? It really is very exciting with regard to the role that Node, JavaScript, and IoT have for the future of the computing landscape. And so with that, I'm going to um, give it over to Paul, um, and hopefully we will have a vibrant discussion about next steps. So thanks, Melissa. Um, so this is, this, this is the part now where you guys are going to chime in. So Melissa's kind of teed up, if you like, the, the good cop, the Kool-Aid side of things, and I want you guys to be the bad cop, right, and tell us, despite all these great things about Node and all the great talks that we've seen uh, around uh, IoT, all right, what are the challenges of taking that from uh, the kind of, um, uh, kind of one-off hack into a, into a product? Right? This is a, this is a, a transition, um, if you like, that Node's already been through. It's already now well-established in the enterprise. Uh, it's kind of, um, we've jumped, as a community, we jumped all those hurdles that we uh, previously would have had a, in, in that kind of adoption. You see all these companies out in the foyer with enterprise sol solutions, kind of what's next now for Node, what's the next frontier? We see that as IoT. What's going to hold us back as a community from really taking that on into production? So we have some feedback already. My name's Andrew. I work Hi. at Salesforce. Uh -huh. and, I, and you know, your question about what, what keeps Node back from the enterprise, I think you can tell some of these good examples that, I mean, you put a lot of effort in Tizen. We have a lot of effort. So it's, it seems like there's, this, there's a large gap, maybe it's the uncanny valley between hobbyists to actually getting you know, an Apple well, Watch that's powered by Node. Right. Or bracelets. Yeah, so I, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's kind of what we're seeing is this tremendous amount of energy and interest on the kind of maker side. But how do we, how do we transition that into production? And, uh, and you know, we, these are some of the things we think about that could be inhibitors. Security, the size of Node and the runtime, performance, tools, manageability, and deployment. All right, when you think about having hundreds or thousands or millions of devices out in the field, but what else? All right, are, th are these real issues? Are these phantoms? So, someone over there. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so, uh, so continuous integration, testing, especially as you get to the, the really kind of small device um, uh, kind of scenario. Okay, it's great feedback. Any other, some from here? It seems like a lot of the 
lot of the devices that are available that can run Node, uh, it's not like first party. Okay. You know, it's it's kind of like a it's kind of a hack. Right. You know, to get mm. Node up and running, like you can do it, but there's a lot of you got to read some blog posts. You got. So there's a lack of Node native devices. Yeah. For for the kind of people to build out build out on. Right. Okay. Yes, and we have uh, the, you know, we have our stand. So if you want to uh, go and talk to the guys about uh, how we've used Node in the, uh, the demo that we have with the smart home demo, then you know, we can go into that detail. Um, but I don't want to make this the kind of Intel show. I want to understand from the <laughs> the crowd. Uh, you know, what are the things? Other things. So no native devices, continuous integration. What other things do we think are kind of holding back Node in IoT? Right. What's in it for them? Why should they do anything but see? They don't make any money for this. Right. I mean, uh, they've got a whole uh, suite of team of people with experience. And what they think is the proper language. Right. And yeah. as far as they're concerned, this is not something that works on their stuff. It's something you do with internet with. And to get that into their uh, environment will take a, a huge amount of Right. There's really nothing in it for them. When it's a larger device, it's in, perhaps they can see some market, some way of uh, doing it. But it's for people, which is incredibly hard to do. You know, embedded developers, uh, and that's a skill in itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's quite difficult to do. And then you've got money. Why? How right. Do you pay for them? Um, it, it's not like our hard work, but we're doing a very, very high level thing. Get the internet of things actually out and running. We need to get it to the low level. Right. And I just don't see how they can make any money. So, if I were to summarise that, yeah. So there's a kind of inertia from the incumbents, especially on the lowest end of devices. I guess is what you're saying. Yeah. That they're already comfortable, happy with C or C plus plus or whatever native language, and I look. Uh, I'm trying to think what's in it for us with Node. Okay. Right. To do. A lot of the things people are talking about, you know, home controls and everything, that's cool and I can play with that stuff, but it's not, it's not the, you know, the big kind of like vision of uh, things that are going to capture people's imagination and really make this, this technology okay. real, so that, that's what I'm seeing. In the area. Okay, so, okay, that, that's interesting. Sorry, was there something in the back? So you're, that's a generic scaling issue with the kind of maker movement. Do you, is that something you see beyond just Node or? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but I think you know we're we're in Portland, right? The home of craft beer, for <laughs> example, right? And so there's an example of at least one industry that can go from you know kind of small things into into kind of mass production into into wide things. So I think it's not an insurmountable problem, but I can acknowledge that, that that's definitely an issue. So sorry, we had some over here at the back. Yeah, I think that really Right. So I think, at least for me, the, the IoT proposition of building software, um, I really need to have a separation between the hardware and the software, right? Mm. Sometimes I actually don't want to see the hardware whatsoever. And that's fundamentally the difference that the tinker will make. Mm. Right. So I think if you want to get Node.js in IoT in an explosive way, you have to also create that, that, um, that barrier. Okay. So 
kind of making the hardware so that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Kind of, it's it's a sort of standard. Right. Okay. Also, ah, right. Having simulators for the for the device as well before deploying to the real hardware. Mm. Okay, that's interesting feedback. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. It's almost like, will the same package manager work for both worlds? Right. Mm -hmm. So package size, the size of node, and the runtime in general um, are going to be an issue in these really uh, kind of small, kind of constrained devices. OK, feedback. Any other? So uh, I, I feel JavaScript is uh, kind of, uh, it's like kind of a uh, selling factor for node to be such pervasive. Uh, so also, I think uh, the you know loopholes in JavaScript and uh, it's been like been kind of evolved like evolved uh, like uh, with ES6 and ES7. Mm -hmm. I think the adoption is slow and um, especially in the enterprise and IoT. Uh, I think JavaScript as a programming language for Node uh, is good in uh, reducing the barrier of entry to a lot of developers, but we also need to. Uh, fix uh, JavaScript to be much more compatible with IoT and uh, enterprise. And, you know, uh, there are some initiatives for that, but uh, I think we need to, uh, you know, kind of accelerate the adoption. Okay. And, uh, you know, and so introduce new things into the language itself that makes it much more, uh, you know, user friendly and developer friendly. So you're saying there's a lack of. IoT specific features in JavaScript. Yes. Can I push on that a little bit and kind of can you elaborate? So, for example, we have uh, embedded languages like Lua, uh -huh. which are like uh, there is a initiative in Nginx community where right. they introduce Lua as a scripting language and they also have a very fast uh, performing web server. But like Lua is being used in a lot of uh, uh, small devices and embedded applications. So, right. But Lua is not that popular as JavaScript because of the language adoption in the community and the right. barrier of entry. But since JavaScript already has that mass, uh, uh, you know, people using it, uh, I think if we can actually make it much more optimized for uh, this IoT space and okay. enterprise, uh, like wherever we wanted to use it more, I think that would uh, probably, you know, kind of make Node indirectly benefit from it. Right. Okay. So kind of related to the previous comment of being able to shrink the size of the runtime. Uh, to be more adaptable to different devices. I guess that's the advantage of Lua is it's very small runtime that you can yeah. you can port easily to different yeah, devices. We, we need to actually find best parts and uh, successes from Lua and use it in JavaScript. Okay. You know, introduce it to IoT. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think, we're, yeah, we <laughs> one last. Right. Okay, that was a lot of letters. Okay. <laughs> and this so, right. Mm. Node. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll be on our stand if you want to continue this conversation afterwards. And thank you, everyone, for your input. Yeah. Just very one, interested in your input. Just so one thank final you very thing. Much. My colleague Dave Stewart here uh, is at Intel on the in the data center side. So he is hiring Node people for enterprise data center, so if you're interested, come and talk to Dave. Thanks a lot, guys.